It's all about the underdog. You know, things like the Pontiac Hero are riding in here. Yeah. I mean, you give it a fair shake. It is a mid-engine uh, sports car, I guess. Yeah. So, that. But we got a way to make it cool. Stick around. Making it cool. Don't wreck me, Lou. Oh yeah, here it is, right here in the shop, the North Star. Now, before you go start throwing stuff at your TV, remember, that's your TV you're throwing stuff at. That's a bad engine, that's a bad engine. We're gonna put this in there. We're gonna challenge the idea of a hot rod in the traditional V8. We're gonna change it up, man. Cause Just that's have what fun we do. With it. Yeah, and we're we tired of good engines getting picked on. No bullying on good engines. That's right. These engines have received a bad rap, and the reason why they deserve a bad rap is because no one really knows anything about them. Uh -huh. They pop head gaskets, they leak, they do all kinds of stuff. But the bottom line is, is if you go to a junkyard, you can pick one of these up for $800 to $1,000. Yeah. And the research that we've done, we've come to the conclusion that the 4.6 is the hot ticket. It's still a 32 valve V8. It's all aluminum, it's light as can be, and it has a lot of neat configurations because it was transversely mounted right. that make it very adaptable to different types of hot rodding or racing, so. One of the weird things about it, the block is two piece. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. But let's show you why that is a problem. <laughs> yeah, leaks. Now Lou was kind enough to drag his Cadillac over here, so we had it for demonstration purposes. And okay, so here's that little oil leak we we're talking about. It's pretty <laughs> massive. So yeah, you got me. They leak oil. And then there's that infamous, you know, head popping issues where yeah. they overheat and blow head gaskets. Let's learn together about this engine. And we're gonna take it apart and we're gonna take the scariness out of it because Hey, that's what we do. Yeah, let's go. Okay, say what you want, but let's talk about this engine's origins. I mean, it was designed by Cadillac to right. take on the world, like, you know, to be an engine with very good pedigree. And it's really a packaging stroke of genius. And I mean that because, like, the coil packs are right here, for example, and then the engine cover. None of it's offensive. It's also just clean and kind of angular. And then when you take it off, it starts looking a little bit more like its brethren, like an LS1. You know? Right. And uh, it has a lot of really unique things about it. Like there's a belt drive on both sides of the engine, which is pretty peculiar, but the water pump's actually driven off of this side. And then all of your accessories are over here. Throttle body is on what would be the back, right? Yeah, it would be the back. Because the flywheel's back here. So if you turn this thing the right way, it's gonna be a pretty cool looking engine and just yeah. about whatever you put it in. Now with the Fiero though, it's the perfect layout because- It's the same way. It's the same way. A 32 valve V8 powered mid engine, albeit kind of weird, sports car. It's but we're awesome. weird. Heck yeah. You know what else is really crazy about this? The starter is under the intake. Yeah, it is. It's so saying. bizarre. They just, they took advantage of every little nook and cranny has a purpose on this engine. No big gaping voids anywhere. Well, voids. let's figure out how to take it apart. Take the fuel rail off. That comes out. I'm imagining this thing. You're imagining it? Yeah, look. A lot of this stuff just relocated, so the engine just looks completely simple and clean. Hide all the wiring. Now here's one thing, it is, I don't know how you look at it, disadvantage or not. I mean, if a coil goes out, which is pretty unlikely, you do have to replace the whole unit, but whatever. It just packages so nicely. It's a neat way to do it. That is cool. Well, my friend, we have more. That was loose. So uh, that could have been bad. All right, time to pop off the cam covers and reveal the camshafts. Cool, man. And these are our culprits. This is why these things fail. If you own a North Star, somewhere along the timeline, these tortilla bolts are gonna fail on you, usually over 100,000 miles. The head will actually lift up off the engine a little bit, destroying the gasket, and well, the rest is history. So that's one of the repairs we're gonna be making. But since we got this engine out of the car, we're gonna be sealing the block too. We'll show you that when we get back. You know, pal, I noticed with your car over there, those tires are a little chopped. Do you feel uh, feeling wiggling or anything? Yeah, I did. I, I noticed that there was a little yeah. bit of shimmy in my get along. Maybe it's because there's junk. Oh, yeah, well, you yeah. Know. There's plenty of tread on them, but. Yeah. Because I'm concerned about your safety. <laughs> so I tell you what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Get my pewter, get a cup of coffee, go to tirerack.com. Nice. Because I heard they got good deals. 
cool with that? I'm cool with that. All right. Y'all go to break. Get your coffee too if you want. I'm gonna get coffee myself. Welcome back. We're still on our North Star. We're lining up the timing marks so we know where everything is at when we take the chains off and then eventually pop the heads off. There's a timing mark on the crank. Here's a timing mark on the counterbalance shaft. This is also for the cam gear. Now, they all have to line up. So you really have to pay attention to what you're doing when you're spinning this thing around. Because it was like four or five turns before everything came in a sink. Once these got all lined up, you have to make sure that the camshafts are lined up. And these are the timing marks on the camshaft. Once we got those straight, we took what's left over our, of our combination square, and you put it on there, and you can see that everything is in line. Now we know that the engine is in time. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to pin the cams so they don't move. This way, when we take it apart, we're not doing the heads over. We take it apart, the cams will be pinned, we know when we put it all back together, we can put everything in line, we line everything up, and it should be in time. And then we'll bar it over, make sure it's right. It was a bit of work, but we got it. Well, it's good practice anytime you're dealing with overhead cam stuff, especially the DOHCs, to pin the cams or stop them in any way, shape, or form. We never really have the special tools, just like everybody else doesn't. So let's just say there was a sale on wrenches. <laughs> We'll leave it at that. So we made it. Uh, made not it going work anywhere. Yeah, yeah it's gonna made work it fine. work. Yeah. So there. All right. Next steps to take it apart. I guess. These will be for sale on our website. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm just grabbing a wrench because let's take some tension. Let's take these tensioners off yeah, so we can get and then get that get that that gear out. And we should be able to break it loose. Word. What do you think? Yes. All right. whole thing about, you know, they, they were trying to build something. Ah. Got you. Oh, stinky. Never held one of these, so I don't know what to expect here. Oh, as light as it looks. Since we don't know this engine's history because it came from a junkyard, we're kind of making observances as we go along, and we're able to draw some conclusions. Like this one definitely lost a head gasket, so it may have not even come out of a wrecked car. It may have just been a bad engine. Yeah. So, but the rest of it looks so nice. Yeah. There's no ridge on the cylinder walls. You can still see the cross hatches in the, in oh, the yeah. cylinders. That's a good but sign. But you can see where it ain't something. Yeah, show this, me. this is why you got to be careful about uh, <laughs> letting little things like rubbers come in. This is clearly a weather pack connector seal, and it actually rode on the piston long enough that it ate away some of the carbon sitting here. Ding, 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 ding. So that's just kind of interesting. So, yeah, you got to be careful. Don't let stuff fall down in your intake. One of the things Lou observed when he's breaking the head bolts loose is the fact that they were all kinds of different tightnesses. So some of them came right out, others took a lot of force to break loose. And you can see here where this one's actually brought some of the threads out of the block with it. So this is all kind of stuff we expected to find, no? Yeah, yeah. And we're about to fix that by studying this block. Hit the other side. All right. There you go. Awesome. Once again, the cylinder walls are fantastic over here. I'm liking so, this engine. Me too. This is a fun, fun experiment. I like this. All right. Well, let's clean these guys down. We'll tape them off and go to the next step. Yeah. So we've been talking to Carroll Custom Cadillac, and they've kind of confirmed our suspicions that the yeah. North Star isn't junk. It just needs some minor tweaks. Then it's tougher than an armadillo covered in spikes. And one of those tweaks is going to be studying the block with these dudes right here. Now, the original fasteners are torqued to yield, and just over time, they couldn't hack it. Yeah. So at around 100,000 miles, these things start popping head gaskets, and everybody's, oh, I'm scared. <laughs> the problem is, that's, for example, too nice of a car, let alone build one for a hot rod, to throw in the trash because the engine... Right had some problems we're afraid of. Well, they have taken the mystery out of that and fixed the two major concerns of this engine, which is the heads moving, which you're not going to now once we put the head studs in, and the leaking, which we'll get to. Exactly. The leaking, because it's a, because it's a two-piece block. But something else that you guys need to be made aware of, he sends you in his kit, he sends you a half-inch half drill bit 
with taps, and he also sends you a 17 30 seconds because what you're going to do is you're going to use the half inch drill bit to clean out the hole essentially. Then 17 30 seconds is the proper size that you need to tap it out for the half inch so you can tap out the whole half inch and then you're good. And it's a real simple process. You just got to take your time and do it right. But the reason why he wants you to run the taps all the way down as far as you can is because he says that you want to grab into the bottom of the block. Your studs are going to go so far in that it prevents the block and the head from warping because you're pulling from the bottom of the block up. Unlike a lot of your older engines where you go down an inch, inch and a half, where it's pulling on the top. He designed his stuff so it's pulling from the bottom. So you're essentially using the whole side of the block to hold that head in place preventing warpage. Well, that's pretty awesome and what like you said preventing warpage you got to think that this guy most of the engines he's working on aren't coming out of brand new cars they're right. coming out of stuff that's already overheated or popped the head gasket and they have never found a warped head or warped block which i think speaks to the quality of how oh, this yeah. thing was engineered i mean the, their heads were in the right place the other thing you got to think about is this is common on any race engine you see yeah. using head studs because it's a better principle for holding a head to the block yep so Let's one. pop a hole in this thing. Come on, man. Pop a hole. Pop a now, hole. One of the things you'll notice about these drill bits, should you order the kit, is they've got a blunt nose on them. They take care of that for you so they don't keep drilling down. In other words, when you find the bottom of the hole, the drill stops, and you know to pull it out. Hear that? That means my bit has officially reached the bottom of the hole. And the one thing you want to look for when you pull your drill bit out, you look down inside the hole, you want to see that shiny surface so you know you kissed the bottom. That way you know you've gone all the way through with the proper diameter. All right, it's easy as that. And then you switch to your next bit and then start tapping. But you guys, go take a break because that's how this whole thing works. And when you come back, we'll show you about the tapping. Get manly with it. Hey, welcome back. Something I want to tell you guys before I tap this hole out. Jared already drilled the second hole because, well, dare I say I'm a spaz when it comes to drilling holes straight. But this four flute tap, it's a tapered tap, which means that your hole is actually going to get smaller the deeper you go because that's the way it's cutting. It's smaller on the beginning than it is on the end. This three fluted tap is a bottom tap. It's the same size diameter from start to finish. So that's why you start with this one and then you run the three fluted one all the way in and the hole is nice and round and it's good to go. So, let me lube it. You gotta lube it. You always wanna lube it before you put it in. Get it started and then just make sure that it's square. Like that. Getting tight, so I want to back it out now. That means that the chips are in there. We don't want to break our tap and mess our hole up. Okay, I started the three fluted tap. Now it's starting to get tight because I knocked all the chips out from the first half. So now I just run this one in all the way down. And I'm just going to run it down until my extension hits the block and back it out. And this hole will be done. All right, now it's time for the head stud installation. One thing to know is that we had to determine what year of block we had. So this is an O2. For deductive reasoning, we figured that out. Because 99 and newer and 99 and older have a difference in the head studs. Now, on the 99 and older, they're all the same length. On the 99 and newer, they decided to not take any chances and run the studs in a little deeper into the block to get into a stronger area. That resulted in, from what I understand, a thinner place in the head mm -hmm. on the lower part of the block. That's important because that means you're going to run on a 99 and older, all of these in the same distance. Now on the 99 and newer, like we have, we're going to run them in so that 2 and 3 eighths is down in the block. These are 6 and 3 quarters long, so we just measure 2 and 3 eighths from the bottom put a mark. Just makes it easy, right? Yeah. Now on the bottom, you're gonna run them in so that three inches is down in the block. Being that the diameter of the shaft is so small, he said you can grab it and put in a pair of vice grips and run it down. Did, yeah, you, tell, did you tell him that we made a mark? 
Yeah, I told him we made a warrant. Okay. Yeah, I said it's easy to do. Okay. You gonna measure that? Yeah, I can. So we're in two and three-eighths. Stud is three-quarters long. That means we'll have four and three-eighths sticking out. We're at four and seven-sixteenths, probably. You need to run it in a sixteenth of an inch. Oh, man. We're on a tight ship. All right, now a lot of times when people get the repair done on the heads, or did in the past, they didn't ever deal with the oiling issues. And the simple truth is, these are a gasket that was designed to compress, and over time, it does just that, and then fails. And then you get massive leaks. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about how to seal this sucker. And looky here, these are main bolts, and we snapped one. I'm told this is very common, actually, and not to worry about it. But we'll give you a little tip. We used a rattle gun on all these that didn't snap, and the one we used a breaker bar on it snapped. snapped in half. So maybe you'd have better luck without it. Goofy thing is, too, these are reusable. Torque to yield, but don't sweat it. I think they're reusable. They're reusable. They're reusable. This now is Now we get to crazy. the coolest part of this engine. Tell them about it. Typically, on most of your engines, you have the bottom of the block like this, and then the cap actually goes like that and straddles everything. The Chryslers and some of the new engines like the LSs and the Coyotes, they don't have that. The, the mains are deep seated in. But this whole half of the block, we're talking a big, what, four inch, five inch piece yeah. of aluminum actually is what holds the crank in place. It's like an overgrown main girdle. It's one giant main girdle. This cap. is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Can we lift Therein it Therein lies a lot of the power. I think so. Crack it uh, loose. I think we're going to have to pry uh, on it a little bit. We're going to get something other this. than manpower. It's, it's coming. Is it? Yeah. All right, you do, do your side. Do your side. Tightly pressed. Easy does it. Nice and easy. Yeah. That's a tight fit. There you go. Like that? Like that. Whoa! Main cap! Oh, dude, that is so crazy. Pretty nice indeed. Oh, it all looks brand new. Look at how nice these journal surfaces are. That's oh the other thing. God. These engines do have a really good reputation for preserving the main journals and the rod bearings and all that. Rarely need any kind of replacing. Why? Well, which you can't say about a lot of engines. Because there's, no, there's virtually no flex. Yeah. Now you can see here where these seals are just completely compressed. I mean, they're flat, almost concave, so it's no wonder you get a leak in the half block. Now, the hot ticket is some people say, oh, you can just put a sealant there, like, you know, the kind that comes out of a tube and you'll be good. That's not true. And you might be thinking, well, hang on, is this just going to leak again? No, because this technology has improved so much now that if you get a quality set of seals and then come back and on top of that, add some sealant that comes out of a tube, let's just say, then you're gonna be in really good shape. But watch out, you wanna make sure that you don't get it in any of these blind holes because you're gonna try and tighten the bolt down, you won't be able to compress the fluid and you could crack parts of the block or the bolt won't seat all the way. So just take your time, make sure this is very clean, put the sealant on and then set the main on and pull it down evenly. That's gonna keep you from getting any you know, spots that have more sealant than not. Just keep it very level. Other than that, that's pretty cool. All right, so you know what? what? We got to pay bills. So I'll let's go pay some time. bills. Okay. And then we'll make it happen. <clears throat> you cool with that? Yeah. Here. You need to wipe right your oh, hands. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, this will do nicely. If you need 360 degree clamping, you need clamp tight. I don't care what size hose it is. It's simple. You wrap the wire around, you attach it to the tool, you screw the tool out, it distributes even pressure, it clamps it nice and tight, and it's low profile, which means it's not going to get hooked on something or you're not going to cut your hand like a regular worm gear clamp. That's why you want clamp tight. It works great on CV shafts, by the way. It even works in the boating industry. So what you need to do is get a nice 360 degree clamp from clamp tight. Engine oil seals aren't the only thing that you're going to have to replace on your car, especially if you're doing a restoration. And that's where Steel Rubber Products' free custom catalog comes into play. Now, they're year-making model specific, so you get exactly what you need. They have detailed pictures and descriptions, so you're not pawing through needlessly looking at stuff that you don't need for your car. They've also done all the research for you, so you know you get the right part, the right product, the first time. Like I said, they're free, so you can go online or talk to one of their product specialists and order a catalog. And the best part is, if you need more than one catalog because you have more than one project, order it up. You can order them at the same time. Now, Lou and I are going to take off and go do some high-speed romps in his running North Star Cadillac so we can have some fun and remind ourselves that this work is actually worthwhile. So we'll catch you after the break.
So the Caddy needed some new sneakers. And the reason why it needed sneakers, tires, is because the tires have a lot of chop. What that means is that the tread is staggered on the outside edge. Some guys say it's from cheap tires. Other guys will tell you it's excessive toe in and toe out. Personally, it's aggressive driving in my case. Even though it's front wheel drive, I still like to kick the booty out a little bit and slide around the corners. Why? Because it's fun. You're in a Cadillac. So these are out. What I got was a set of tires from TireRack.com. These are the premier all seasons by Michelin. Now, they're all season, which means they give you good wear and tear all the time. Rain, sleet, snow, summer, whatever, it doesn't matter. What you have is you've got wide grooves to channel out the water out. But you know what? If you live somewhere, like up in Minnesota, where you need a legitimate snow tire, you want to get a set of Michelin X Ice. I like that, X Ice. <laughs> If you live somewhere where you need them, I recommend getting them. But being that I live in the great state of NC, no class, that means I don't need them because we don't have a lot of snow. And when it comes, it's a day and it's gone. So I'm on it. And there you have it. Now that you know what the Achilles heel is of the North Star and how to fix it, well, by God, I think you should go out and get one. I know you are. Yeah, I am. Because they're cheap. Why not? Why not? Yeah. You know, I right. could have showed you the whole thing, but we talked too much. So <laughs> you get the just, you don't want to be seeing gaskets going on. This one's definitely going to need it. So we'll get it done. Get you know? it done. Let's go for a ride. Close this hood. Let's go for a ride. Burn some rubber, new rubber. Those weren't cheap enough. Auto up windows. Man, you know. It is a fine ride. The tires feel any better? Yes, yes, man. The tires feel fine. I still think it's, it's kind of weird that you made me drive. But I don't. Well, you know, Manfred, being that I never get chauffeured around that often, I'm able to take advantage of it while I'm here. Okay. How often do you call me I know better than to ask with you, but I just figured I'd say what's up. Man. The duck man, I love these things because they do have good pickups. You know what I mean? You're gonna pull down 6,800 RPM. And from what I read, these things love RPM. I can see why after tearing into them. I really can. 